What is going on? Rude. Absolutely rude. Your sister can't block you and then suddenly come back tomorrow and be fine. And then block you again next week and then suddenly come back the following day and be fine and expect everything to be okay. But do I recommend shooting your shots? Absolutely. What do you even mean? Whew, that was hard. Let me drink some water. Hang on. They made the choice not to choose you anymore. Yeah, I'm doing well with no contact. Woohoo! But I'm stalking social media. So is it really doing anything for you? Is the no contact actually doing anything for you? Unless that person been been gone. <laughs> Seems like the whole world is going through breakups right now. I don't know what is going on. I really don't know. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It is me, it is Katle Omalela. Thank you so much for choosing me over and over again. Thank you so much for being part of this wonderful here community. I love you guys so, so much. And you guys keep me going. Even in my difficult times, you guys keep me going. You keep me going. As always, thank you for choosing me over and over again. Please do subscribe to the channel if you do like the content. And also like the videos, watch the ads. It is so beneficial to helping me create more content for you you and if you do want to see extra bonus content more personal videos more personal life story videos about my life behind the scenes and behind the main space definitely do join the membership space the join link is down in the description down below so today we are going to be doing an advice with cat and let me tell you it is crazy the amount of questions i got asked about moving on from a breakup what do I do when this and this is currently happening in my relationship? What, what? Listen, about 90% of the things that I got asked to give my advice on or my take on have to do with relationships, more specifically breakups. And this is kind of crazy because I, it's all I ever see on TikTok. It's all I ever see on TikTok. Breakup content. I've just gone through a breakup no contact i got a question about no contact that i saw what 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 and it's the craziest thing so we're gonna go into your uh questions that you asked me that you asked for my take on if i could unlock my phone that'd be great wow i really can't unlock my phone but before we get into the heartbreak ones and the relationship-centered ones i'm gonna get through the ones that i saw that are not in relation to relationships so the first one says what is your take on a biological sister that doesn't talk to you and blocks you constantly now here's the thing relationships with sisters are phenomenal okay they're phenomenal they can be absolutely explosive or they can be the best relationship that you will ever ever have in the world sisters are the most wonderful people and I think you have seen from the relationship that I have with my sister and what I've shown online in terms of the trips we've taken together us always going out and meeting each other for lunches and dinners and 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 popping off like recently I went to Jameli with my sister actually I was going to go pick her up and then we ended up having a fun time at Jameli and all of this but relationships with sisters are just incredible they can be really great or they can be really bad but my take on this comment, especially without context, is that I think we need to take into account why this behavior is happening. Why is your sister constantly blocking you? Why does she not want to talk to you? Is it stemming from a relationship that you had with her prior? Is it stemming from um, interactions or engagements that you have with other members of your family because one thing that I do know about relationships with sisters is that if you are having certain conversations about your sisters or siblings rather generally if you are having certain conversations about your sibling to certain members of the family and it ends up getting back to them or you are talking about your sister to your friends or whatever and it ends up getting back to them there's certain things that might be creating this atmosphere around you and your sister where she feels the need to consistently block or not speak to you. Two, it could be a huge boundary thing. 
you might not see that your sister is actually enforcing a boundary. I don't even know if your sister is younger than you or older than you, but boundaries when it comes to people must be respected. Yes, the ping-ponging is not cool, right? And this is something that you would also have to express and talk to your sister about, and that is a boundary that you feel that she shouldn't be crossing, right? Your sister can't block you and then suddenly come back tomorrow and be fine and then block you again next week and then suddenly come back the following day and be fine and expect everything to be okay. So I think it is definitely a conversation that you would have to have with your sister. There might be a particular reason why your sister has taken the stance of blocking and unblocking and all of that. If you know that your sister is doing this to you and you feel like, it's something that you can't take anymore. I think it's time to have that conversation with your sister and say, listen, I need to understand why you are doing this. I want us to have a great relationship. This is what I want for us. I want us to have a really wonderful, full, fulfilling, content, sister-sister relationship, but I'm not understanding why you are doing this to me because it hurts my feelings. It makes me feel a certain way. And if she doesn't give you a solid response as to why, maybe based on something that has happened, if she doesn't give you a perfect indicator that on this day you did this to me, or you hurt me when you did this, or you did this and did this, if she doesn't give you anything and she keeps on being verbose, right? She goes round and round in circles and she's not saying anything solid. I think that would be the perfect time for you to communicate with her that I'm going to need you to respect the fact that this is not consistent behavior for me. This is unhealthy for me. This makes me feel some type of way. I really don't like it when you treat me in this manner. And you need to have a sit down conversation with your sister. And I had a really nice question that says, Cat. Do you advise women to shoot their shot and have you done it before? I advise women to shoot their shot. I definitely advise. I'm, I'm pro-feminism, okay? I respect the concept of feminism. I see where it's at. I can also see how it's very convoluted with misinformation and all of this. But more than anything, I do... I'm pro the progression of women, okay? I'm pro the progression of women in society, in relationships, in their engagements with other people. So absolutely, I would be incomplete. What is going on? Rude. Absolutely rude. I would be in complete agreeance to shooting your shot. Have I shot my shot before? No. I've always had shots shot at me, okay? <laughs> yes. I've always had the people shoot the shots at me, girl, okay? Uh, whether it be women or men, they will always shoot their shots at me. But that's just my personality. I, I, I'm very anxious and I get nervous and all of this. So one thing that I would recommend is that you be very comfortable in your self-awareness. You need to understand that rejection could be a thing and you need to be okay and comfortable with being rejected if you ever do get rejected. But do I recommend shooting your shots? Absolutely. What do you even mean? I think it's really progressive. I think it's strong. It sends across your messages of being, you know, forward in a healthy way um, and wanting what you want and being bold and strong. So, yeah, I highly recommend shooting your shot. If you're in a position where you want to shoot your shot, go shoot your shot, girl. Shoot your shot. It's beautiful, beautiful things, beautiful things. Um, but I haven't personally uh, shot my shot. I, I've liked somebody, and I've and I've said I like somebody, and maybe I may have done certain things or um, you know behaved a certain way that might be indicative of the fact that I like that person. And if they like me back, they'll shoot their shot. But if they don't, I keep it moving. But I recommend it. I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend it. Definitely. All right, the rest of them are about relationships and more specifically breakups. Here's the thing, before we get into breakups, I'm seeing, my, my nose often gets really itchy when I start recording, it's the craziest thing. But I'm seeing a lot of content online. It seems like the whole world is going through a break breakup. <laughs> It seems like everybody in the world is going through a breakup or some sort of relationship disintegration or relationship devastation that is currently happening. There's a couple of questions that I was asked to address here about people's mental health 
and the status of their current relationships where there's a lot of abuse involved and those ones I'm not going to talk about online. I would rather address them privately because I think once you tap into spaces of emotional abuse, uh, of um, physical abuse, which one of them is, I, I don't want to talk about that kind of thing online um, and I would rather address the person personally. However, let's get into the relationship ones, okay? Hey cat, I just broke up with my boyfriend and I'm currently in hospital because I tried to unalive. Okay, please advise me as an older sister on how to deal with heartbreak. Now this is also a very, very difficult one because she's now gone through the process of trying to unalive herself and thank goodness it didn't work because no heartbreak should ever be worth you unaliving yourself, ever ever and if you are watching this right now from wherever you are and you are going through a heartbreak right now and this is what you're considering to do please note that no one person should ever have that much power over you that you would take to unaliving yourself it's a very base form statement to kind of make you know it's very easy to say things like that and certain things are easier said than done and i get it but if it comes especially when it comes from a relationship somebody else should never have that much power over you to get you to unaliving yourself i think at this point the one thing that i would highly recommend is a lot of therapy. I would highly recommend a lot of therapy, a lot of inward looking into yourself. What is it that you are not sure of when it comes to yourself? What is it that you feel that you would base so much importance on someone being in your life who made the choice no longer to be in your life? They made the choice not to choose you anymore. Why do you place so much importance on somebody who's willing to throw you away like that so much so that you it would get to a point that you are unaliving yourself? It's very painful to talk about things like this because I think that um, it's hard to go down the route of healing and the journey of discovering yourself and finding yourself and uh, finding self-importance, being more self-aware and knowing who you are um, because it's difficult when you're pitting it against somebody that you love so much and you never thought that this would happen. But for a lot of people who have gone through a lot of relationships, they never, you don't go into a relationship thinking it's going to end. No one ever does that. No one goes into a marriage thinking it's going to end. No one goes into a relationship thinking it's going to end. This weather is pissing me off. But no one goes into those spaces thinking that it's going to end. But also no one goes into those spaces as well thinking that if this person leaves me, I'm going to unalive myself. I think it has a lot to do with your personal perspective on you, how you see yourself, your worth as a person, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm recovering from the flu, your worth as a person, what you mean to yourself, your value systems, your belief systems, what you mean to yourself. And I think discovering that would definitely include doing a lot of healing work, a lot of therapy, a lot of opening of doors and answering a lot of questions that you are not ready to confront. But if you've gotten to the stage where you are in the hospital because of doing something, it's not even a matter of are you ready or are you not. It's a matter of you need to do this. And I'm really, really sorry that that relationship impacted you so much that it made you question whether you want to be in the world or not anymore. I don't feel that any relationship should have that kind of power over you. But I also do understand that relationships get deep relationships you share so much of your life with someone you share your good times your bad times you share so much of yourself that a lot of the time we tend to get lost in the source right we get lost in the source of the relationship we get we lose ourselves to the relationship we lose ourselves to the person in the relationship and we forget who we are who that was hard let me drink some water hang on i got a lot of comments by various, and it's mostly women here, right? So various women who said, 
who talked about being in the non no contact stage and what they should do or how they can progress and get through the no contact stage. I will mention this one because um, the others are just cats. Can you advise how to get through the no contact stage? But this lady says, I'm doing well with no contact, but I'm still stalking his social media. How can I stop stalking? Unfollow, block, disengage. Now, I'm not a big firm believer of blocking, okay? I, 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 I preach it, right? But for me, it's not really something that I do. But I do understand the importance of doing so. And because you are in the stage where you're fine with the no contact, but now you are stalking his social media, the only thing that you can do is to block so that it keeps you away from reaching out onto the social media space because now that you've blocked him if you unblock him he'll know that you've unblocked him he'll know that you are seeing he'll know that you are stalking so you are making yourself accountable and you're putting yourself in a very difficult position by blocking but you're saying to yourself that you know what because i have no wherewithal okay i have no wherewithal to stay away so I keep going on to social media, his social media and stalking and whatever. I do not have that, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's not strength. I don't have that, that composure, that thing just to keep away, right? So because you do not know how to or you don't have that strength to keep away, the best thing you can do is block. Because the moment you block is the moment you're sending a message to yourself that, I can't see anything going forward because the moment you unblock, you will see and it will be notification to him that he's been unblocked. And now, do you want that person to know that you're busy faffing around blocking and unblocking and blocking and unblocking? I think just block and try your best to move forward because it's really, really difficult. The mere fact that you're managing with no contact is great, but you're managing with no contact because on the other side, you're stalking the social media. So it's really, it's like, yeah, I'm doing well with no contact, woohoo, but I'm stalking social media. So is it really doing anything for you? Is the no contact actually doing anything for you? Let me tell you about the power of no contact, right? The power of no contact, as much as it hurts, it hurts. Oh, trust you me. I know, I know, I know. It hurts to not have contact, especially if you have just gone through a breakup with somebody and this is somebody that you've been with for years and years on end and you talk every single day and all of this to magically just go from talking every single day to not talking at all is very, very difficult. Every single time, You'll make mistakes once or twice. You'll reach out. You'll try and break the no contact rule. You'll break it, right? You'll break the no contact rule. You'll break all of this. But forgive yourself for that, okay? Give yourself grace and say, you know what? It's difficult. I've been living with this person. I've been living inside and outside their skin for the last couple of years. We talked every day and this and this and it was perfect. And now I just need to stop cold turkey? The thing about no contact is it works. It works. It's the only thing it'll take forever. Okay, now here's the thing about no contact. It works, but it takes a long time, especially dependent on how close the relationship was, how much stuff, right, you've shared, how much, how much is in that bag of your relationship how many experiences you've shared together does the families know each other does this and this it is a, is it a marriage that went cold and now you're going no contact maybe you don't have kids so you don't need to keep contact right all of this no contact is freaking hard especially if you are not the one who initiated the breakup that's also really 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 oh my god if you are not the one who initiated the breakup, no contact is going to be a killer. It's going to be a killer for you. But the person who initiated the breakup deals a lot better with the no contact because they are the one who said, I'm out. I'm out. Can't do this anymore. Can't stand your ass. I'm out. But people break up for different reasons, right? People, maybe some people 
are going through no contact because they need that period as well to heal. They need that period to disengage. You also need that. But the no contact phase is great because it helps you rediscover yourself. It doesn't necessarily mean that the love for that person goes away. It doesn't necessarily mean that you might never talk to that person again. You might. You might not. But you might. And uh, it just means that in this period, in this time that you are going no contact, this is the time where you, you allow yourself to think about the role that you played in the relationship for it to end. For you to find healing and peace of mind a little bit, right? For you to rediscover yourself and who you are. No contact is supposed to be beneficial for both parties involved, irrespective of whether you ended it or not. Or they ended it, they didn't, you, you ended it, blah, 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 blah. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Irrespective of who ended it, no contact is supposed to be beneficial. Some people come back together after no contact dependent on how the maturity level of the relationship you might want the relationship back but hey man that person doesn't want the relationship back no contact is going to help that person have a clearer understanding of what it is that they want the peace of mind or the, it just gives them the opportunity to move on they just want to move on they just want to be done with it that's the unfortunate part if you are the party that wants to work things out but no contact works differently for different types of attachment styles, right? There's a thing called attachment styles in psychology, folks, okay? There are people who are anxious attachments. There are people who are avoidant attachments. There are people who are secure attachments. So anxious attachment, that's me, that's me, okay? Um, going through a breakup and going through no contact drives an anxious attachment up the freaking wall. They don't know what to do with themselves. It is hurtful. It is breaking my heart. I don't know what to do. That's what it does. With an avoidant, it's relief. Initially, it's relief. They wanted it done. It's, 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 it's just like, whoo, I'm relieved I don't have to, to talk to this person every day. I don't have to explain myself to anyone. I don't have to whatever. It doesn't mean that they're not hurting. It's just that initial stage of relief. With a secure attachment, they're just like, it's, it's cool. The breakup has break up. It'd be like that sometimes, right? With avoidance, it's relief first. And then they just need that time. Takes a couple of months for some. Takes a couple of weeks for some. Takes a couple of years for others. And then they get to the stage where maybe they start reminiscing and thinking about the relationship and all of this. Chance. It's a whole science, this thing. But if you want to... If you want us to talk about it in a separate video, we can do that. But right now, no. No. But, um, okay. Can we talk about the pain that comes with moving on from a relationship with someone? I know her. The one who, who said this. Bruv! Pain. Everybody is going to experience some level of pain. Especially when it comes to being hurt. Every disintegration and devastation and breaking up of a relationship will hurt both parties involved. That's facts. Even if it might hurt the other at a later stage and hurt the other one immediately when it happens, it will hurt. That is facts. And trying to move on, coming, the breakup of a relationship comes with a lot of sadness, comes with a lot of loneliness, comes with a lot of questioning yourself the role that you played in the relationship, the role that they played, the things that you overlooked, the things that you didn't consider, the things that are now starting to make sense to you in hindsight, the things that are, you know, all of these things that, that, that are now happening post the breakup are difficult. A lot of people go into isolation. I go into isolation after breakups and all of this because I need that time to think about the role that I played, the role that they played, to, to do I still love that person? Do I still want to be with them? All of this, blah, 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 the hurt, the no contact, the loneliness that comes with it, right? Because so for so many people, especially if you've been in a serious relationship, serious relationship with a person who you felt like was your best friend, all the hurt is insane and it's deep. It's deep and it doesn't heal for a long time. For a long time, you're going to go through it. But with time, things get easier. They get easier. The rainy days will come. The sun will shine today. The rainy day will come tomorrow. 
and everybody has different coping mechanisms, right? Um, but it's it's a difficult time. Moving on, moving forward from a relationship is lonely, it's painful, um, especially if you don't want to, but you have to respect the other party. If they don't want to, but they have to respect you because you're the one who chose the breakup, it's difficult. It's difficult for both parties involved. Unless that person been, been gone. <laughs> this is true, right? Unless that person been, been gone. If that person exited the relationship two months before actually exiting the relationship and telling you, the breakup is not going to... Once the breakup happens, it's not going to do much for them because they've, they've, they've mentally checked out. They checked out from the relationship two months ago. They started something new unbeknownst to you with somebody else. There was probably a third party. There was probably all these things. So the moment they decide to break up with you or the moment the breakup happens with you and you break up with them, they'd already checked out. They'd already checked out. So for them to move on is very quick. But for the person who is devastated by the breakup, whether they did it or not, it's going to be hard to move on. Seems like the whole world is going through breakups right now. I don't know what is going on. I really don't know. I just found out my boyfriend of 11 years, this is, this is going to be the last one because all of them are about breakups. And to be honest, this video is already too long. But to be honest, if you do want me to do uh, a video on no contact, on heartbreak, breakups, I really do have a video on heartbreak on my channel and how to, to, to try and move on from heartbreak. Um, but if you want me to do videos on attachment styles or co uh, no contact or all of these things relating to the breakups of relationships, then please let me know. Comment in the description box below because I will gauge by the amount of people who want to see it that I should do it or not. But this will be the last one because most of them are about breakups, bro. I'm still hurting. I'm going through a breakup. What do you advise I do? I've got a video on breakups on my channel right now right now it's on my channel this lady says i just found out my boyfriend of 11 years has impregnated someone girl hey banna oh. hey banna I've been through this. I ended a relationship because somebody had impregnated somebody. And the hurt that comes from that. Okay, my case was worse because around the time that this hand that was impregnated was pre even me, I was pregnant and I had a miscarriage. That's a conversation for another day. But I've been through this. It's disrespectful. If somebody is going to step outside of the relationship, while in it, 11 years, it should tell you a lot about how that person views you, about how that person sees you, just as a human being, just about how they view you and see you as a human being. It is not the easiest, but I think your self-worth and your respect for yourself should come into play. I would never, <clears throat> ever, ever say, leave somebody. I never even say to my friends after they're telling me that their boyfriend cheated on them or their boyfriend did whatever to them or whatever, whatever. I never tell anyone to leave anybody because you never know the dynamic of a relationship. You don't. So I'm not going to sit here and tell you to leave this person. But I will sit here and tell you to do some work for yourself. To realize that if this person can go out and impregnate someone on you what does that say about him and what does that say about you if you are allowing to keep on what does that say about you what does that mean for you for your relationship and what are you willing to do going forward regarding that i'd never say leave but there's a whole lot of self-respect that must come into play self-awareness that must come into play self-love and self-worth at some point, you need to realize that if somebody loves you, one, they should never step out on the relationship. The moment they step out on the relationship, during the relationship, that's it. It's done. And it should be done. The moment they go even as far as to impregnate 
while in a relationship with you, I think that speaks for itself. Because impregnating someone means you're not using a condom. And at some point, you need to think about your health as well. If somebody's going to step out on you and not use protection to get as far as impregnating someone, whew, that's a hard one, child. Oh, no. If you guys have any suggestions, that's, that's my take on that. Okay, that's my take on that. I'm going to end it here. If you guys have any suggestions on what you would like me to do videos on, no contact, attachment styles, heartbreaks, if you want me to do an updated heartbreak video, <sighs> wouldn't want to do it because <laughs> but it's fine it's fine if you want me to do that i will do it let me know down below let's talk about it what would you like to see from me on my channel in terms of relationships or friendships i will film those videos for you because i see that a lot of us are going through a lot in terms of friendships and relationships especially lately but i'm gonna end it here i hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did please like and subscribe definitely watch the ads thank you as always for choosing me over and over again i'm gonna go now until the next video i will see you very very soon and to all of those who are going through heartbreak my heart is with you you have no idea my heart is with you and um one day at a time one day at a time one day at a time you know who you are you know what you bring to relationships you know what is in your heart about someone about something you know that you need to remind yourself that sometimes it's not about you it's not about you you, you just, that's what I'm going to say. Sometimes it's not about you and sometimes we need to let think, go of things that we cannot control. Okay? Um, and good luck. And I hope you find love again. I hope the love that you want comes back and receives you and, and opens up to you again and you do all the work that is needed with that kind of situation and set up. Um, yeah. But this was a really hard video for me to film because heartbreak is never really easy. Um, and some of the things that were on here, I really just cannot speak about online, but we'll, we'll push this one. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for choosing me over and over again until the next one. I will see you very, very soon until then. Mwah. Sayonara. Whew.